coming up next on Access Framingham TV, my guest, Framingham resident Joel Winnett, shares with us his vacation in Eastern Europe. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome to Travels with Jack. I'm your host, Jack Barron. As always, if you would like to be a guest on our show and share with us a recent trip, a vacation, a cruise, maybe a day trip right here in New England, we would love to have you as our guest. You can talk about the transportation, the flight, the hotels, the shopping, the good food you enjoyed, the people you met, anything you'd like to share with your friends and our viewing audience. Just contact us here at Access Framingham TV and let us know you'd like to be a guest. You can phone AFTV at 508-875-5434 or you can send an email message to an info at accessframe.tv. Our associate producer will be in touch with you to make arrangements for you to be on our show here on Access Framingham TV. Today, my guest is Framingham resident Joel Winnett. Joel has been with us before, and he is a Framingham resident for some 45 years, town meeting member 35 years, former moderator, and is also in, other than uh, Framingham municipality life, a software manager. Uh, retired software. Retired software manager. You're never retired, Joel. <laughs> and he is going to share with us his trip in September of 2011 to Eastern Europe. He was in Prague, Budapest, Vienna. Help me, Cheshire, I always... Chesky Kramloff. Chesky Kramloff. Thank you, Joel. Uh, he has three children, seven grandchildren, and a lovely wife that shared this trip with him, Ruth. So, um, Joel, if you would, tell us, and uh, as soon as Bill gets the photos going, I know you'll give us more information on the photos, but tell me a little bit about this trip, how much you enjoyed it, how long it took you, how'd you get there? Well, you, you get there, you fly from Boston to, to London, and to, in this case to Budapest, but the best thing is on my trips, our trips that we go on, uh, I kind of tailor them myself. Uh, we don't go in big groups. Um, we were just my wife and myself who traveled with a guide in each city. Uh, and I was very fortunate looking at ways to hook up with somebody to make the arrangements in each city to I hooked up with this group called Go Real Europe. It's a travel consultant you from You found Prague. this online? Just found it on the web. Yep. Um, and I eventually contacted other people who had made arrangements through so Go Real Europe. So you checked references. I checked references. Yep. Uh, spoke to them, sent an email, and they were very pleased. Uh, this trip had um, some some special things. Um, uh, the cons consultant made our hotel reservations. That, that's relatively easy. Okay. I started to do it myself, but then he did it. And it's central in, the lo in each good location near where we wanted to go. And he provided a guide, made the arrangements, that met us at the hotel in the morning. Uh, one day of each day, uh, or one and a half days in each city. So we had somebody to take us around, and then we went on our own. We used public transportation, um, and we did a lot of walking. Specifically, in this case, we had a GPS 
uh, an iPhone GPS. And it worked there. And, it, and it, you don't really need it, but it's kind of fun. It provided maps of the streets. So you're at the hotel, and you want to go to the opera house, and you, you kind of click in it, and it, it'll show, you'll walk along the streets. And Amazing. You can, and you know, some people will say, how do you know where to go? Uh, that, that helped. But eventually, I got familiar with the streets and the subways, and they provided us with a, uh, a subway pass, so I didn't have to worry about buying tickets every time. I got you. It was it was very convenient way to go. So between the guide and your iPhone, you could go anywhere. You could, you could go anywhere, <laughs> uh, and we did. Budapest, I love it. Vienna, and Prague, um, and we spent four days in Prague. Okay, now that was the first city you went to. That's the first city. We worked our way north. Help me with my uh, history. Is it the Czech Republic or is it the... It, uh, pra um, Prague is the Czech Republic okay. and Chesley Kromlov is in the Czech Republic. Budapest is Hungary. Yep. Uh, Budapest is Hungary um, and then Vienna, Austria. And, and going north into Czech Republic. Okay, but in the other part of the Czech Republic that split? Um, Sl Slovakia. And that would not include any of Budapest? I no, mean, Slo any of Slovakia is its own country. Yep. Uh, we didn't go there. Um, it's not as interesting, although a lot of travelers go there. Um, we almost went to Bratislava. Uh, as I had, I had kind of planned that. Uh, but then we see the, the, the guy c consultant um, said, you know, let me tell you, send you to a castle town in, in Czech Republic. And, and it worked out very well. well. We'll get there. But we did a lot of sightseeing, a lot of music, concerts, and, um, and we're, we're going to start off. Uh, I've made some videos. My camera, Canon camera, G9 camera, uh, has a video you sure capability. sure that's not your private jet? That's not my <laughs> private jet. Yeah. And I was, I can go to, went to concerts, kept my camera on my lap, turned it on, and made some videos of concerts. And you'll see them. I think that's going to be fun. And so one of the, the play, trips we went to in Budapest was a folk dance group. And so um, if we're ready in the cameras, uh, we'll show the folk dance. That looked, that looked to me like they were doing the polka. Uh, <laughs> it could be. Um, it was very lively. Uh, and, and, you, and I love the costumes. And it was a good way to start off the trip. Uh, that, that first evening we were, we were there. Uh, here's a map. Uh, you kind of ask the directions. You see Poland and, and Romania as being the big countries there. Uh, and right in the center is Hungary uh, with Budapest. And then you go, uh, you go north and, and you see the Slovakia in brown. Yep. But if you go off to the, um, the west, you, you see Vienna. Uh, and we took a train from Budapest to Vienna. Uh, and then we went north uh, to the Czech Republic, as shown in um, turquoise or um, blue or something like that. And so that's, that's Eastern Europe. Um, a lot of people go to Western Europe, which um, isn't, isn't shown there. Um, but there's, and you see a little bit of Italy. You know, I have to tell you, when I see this map and I see Romania and everything, I'm thinking we're watching the James Bond movie mm -hmm. from Russia with love. <laughs> And uh, coming up through uh, Buda, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Bucharest, and up and following that and train uh, Orient Express and the train trip. Yep. Well, and and and, and a was Rosa Klemp on the trip? No way, no way. <laughs> And a previous trip, we, we went to, my wife and I, we have been to Moscow and St. Petersburg, and we, you and I talked about that yes, trip. Yes, you, and your and, wonderful and, trip to China. And so they, we, we do one trip a year um, in some place, sometimes in the United States. So we're going to start off in Budapest. This is your wife, this is the my dark wife hair, on the, the left, brunette, yes. I should say. <laughs> And, and that's, our, that's our guide, Edith. Okay. Um, and, and so she was, a, a, okay, obviously, a native. And she took us around. Uh, so the first stop we, were going, we go to was um, to, through the, the Buddha side of the river. And it, we're up on Castle Hill. Yes. Uh, this is a 13th century uh, castle, uh, which was the site of the Royal Hungarian Court. 
Uh, and, and from the hill, this is the legislature building. Am I correct? Yes, over to they, the, on the left, uh, kind of in front of the yep. um, domed area. And that's the Danube <clears throat> River we're looking at. Yes, and, that, and that's uh, and the, you got that's Pest. Yep. So we're on Buda, and the other side is Pest, um, and and that's. Um, uh, that's a fun area, and there are cruises. Cruises. We met other people that had taken a cruise on the same trip or a similar trip, but they do it by boat because up the Danube you can go from Budapest to Vienna by boat. Yes. Um, so, um, in, in our case now, we're going to get started, and that's the Chain Bridge, uh, very well known. It's the first permanent bridge across the Danube. It was opened in 1849. Uh, very solid bridge. Uh, and then this is the landmark, the Opera House. Oh. Uh, we were able to walk from beautiful our hotel. Beautiful building, beautiful. Um, it, it's well preserved, um, and it was opened in 1884. Um, and, it's, it, and one of the conductors was Gustav Malov. Uh, there's inside, there are a number of photographs uh, of Gustav Malov. And we uh, had a good, good time in the Opera House. Uh, we saw some, a performance. And here is a performer who, uh, this wasn't a, a regular performance. He just talked to a group uh, out in an ante room or a small hall. And he did some singing. And, and the performer uh, gave us a nice introduction to opera. So now let's see what the opera uh, looked like. Now, this was your G9 camera. Yes, it is. <laughs> not, not a video recorder, just your regular camera that also took, it, it, it took snapshots. It took some videos, video, no, snapshots, of course. Yep. But it also has a video, and the trick is to get it so you have 10, 15, 20 seconds. You don't want to see a big movie. But um, I found this is a nice addition to my travel log. Yeah, I think it's great. So, so you get to hear and see what we saw. So. Uh, for a quick snapshot, that was Budapest, um, and now we're going to take a train and we get we go to Vienna. Uh, and in addition to seeing the sights and the cities, my wife's family comes from Vienna. Uh, her mother and father were were there. Now this is Ruth in front of what? This it is looks in like front a of a synagogue. That's right. It's it's in front of a, a synagogue. Yep. Um, and that was one of the first places we wanted to go. Uh, and, and this was her family synagogue. Um, they, my, their, her father and mother were married in the synagogue. Oh, okay. And so it, was, it had some it was very some meaningful significance. Us. Okay. Besides going in the inside and, and getting the tour, we asked, did they have an archives? And this picture is my wife with the person in the archives who had bookshelves of uh, bo records. The way they did it, when you were married, you were born, you died, you made an entry into a log. And how th those books were preserved uh, through World War II and, and through the Nazi invasion. And, and they just were on a shelf. 1925 to 1935, there they are. And we had the archivist uh, open up an, a, a book, and he found this particular page. And the lower left-hand side, you could see the words Joseph Schiff. I don't know how, how well it can read. I can, I can mm -hmm. see it. I don't and, know if the, and, our viewers can. But uh, there's a list of the people who were there. Uh, there aren't many people, because this was in 1938, um, right, right after the Crystal Knock. And, and so they were... Uh, we, we were able to see the archives there, and we went through a number of other books, uh, the, not only my wife's parents, their grandparents, and we found out about cemeteries, uh, and, and there was a, a good history lesson to go back to in the back in the park, uh, past. We visited the apartment that my um, in-laws lived in. Uh, and now, we, did they leave in 39? When did they leave? Um, they left in 39, right. Okay. They, were, they were married in 38, um, and my father-in-law left first. Um, he, my mother-in-law said, 
somebody's got to go if we're going to survive. And he left. And six months later, uh, my mother-in-law came. So they were able York, to get out at that time. And they and then they also brought out my mother-in-law's uh, my my uh, uh, parents. Okay. And and she had a, has two brothers and a sister. And they all got out. Except for the sister. Oh. The sister uh, did not come to New York and then eventually and, and, and different places the sister went into hiding okay and she survived oh really and but she was in hiding during the war and then subsequently and in the, the year she traveled to the, to Boston and and we got together with the family the four siblings the two brothers and it's two so sisters. rare I hear stories of people hiding and surviving you uh, so we went to the, um, the, the, the the cemeteries and we went to the courtyard of the uh, apartment I saw quickly they they showed the the doorway uh, there it is right there that's the apartment number 40 um, uh, uh, and that's where her, your wife's family lived they lived there when they were the father my 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 father-in-law went to university in, in Vienna and he said he was a physician yep uh, he went to medical school and he lived there by himself um, after his father had passed away and then eventually met my mother-in-law and and, um, and they lived in that apartment for a short period of time and he told us stories about in the backyard there was a grassed area and he used to go outside and play we went in you see somebody go through the door and you you run right after them and you can get through in these um, European apartments the way they have them, you, you go through the front door, you're in a lobby. Okay. And then you can go out the back door. Um, but both doors are locked. So you have to have somebody that kind of can let you in and out. In with. And we went out the back door and looked around. And, and we were there. It was very meaningful to my wife to, to see in person where the stories that her father had told her. And we wanted to do more. So this was a, a trip to see the sites. It was also a trip to now, go to visit. Now, this is her parents' gravestone. That's right. Fanny Schiff and Rudolf Schiff. Dr. Rudolf Schiff. Yep. Um, uh, 1873 to... 1930, it looks 1928. like. 1928. Okay. Uh, um, 1928. All right. So they got married uh, 10 years after uh, he had passed away. So we went to the Vienna Cemetery and we um, found, we, we were able to find it. That's, it wasn't so easy. Well, you know, you mentioned cemeteries. I'll tell you a brief story. I'm reading the uh, newspaper today and about China. And they were touring Shanghai and they were found in antique stores these Hebrew cemetery stones. And the Chinese were taking them and selling them, and they didn't really know what they were. They're artifacts they can make money Artifacts on. they could make money, and this particular writer traced it, and they were tracing the uh, immigration into China, which actually was mostly the early 1800s. A lot of Jewish people from Siberia came down out of Russia and settled mm. in Shanghai, and there were, of course, uh, very famous Iraqi families, the uh, Sassoons and the uh, Kudami, I think their name was, but they were Iraqi Jews who were very big merchants in Shanghai. But when you show me the gravestones, that was the story in the paper. And, and, and on our trip to, to China, one of my, my um, mother-in-law's my uh, brothers uh, went from a concentration camp. He was in Dachau, and he went to uh, Shanghai. Shanghai. And he lived there for over a year. And we that, on that trip we yes. visited. Yes, they allowed they you to come into China without visas. They were very welcoming. Yep. And interestingly enough, the Japanese uh, people who the Japanese nation who was basically occupying China at that time, the Nazis had asked them to collect the Jews who were, and they would not. They said we won't get into that. So. And so you know, China was in the middle of it, and they were very friendly. They didn't like yep. the Japanese. They did not like the, the Japanese, and they still understandably and, so. And because that that's a whole new step, a whole different story. But here we're back to to Vienna. Um, besides family, this is Beethoven's um, stone. Uh, and we, you have to see the other, the rest of the the cemetery and the rest of the sites. And there were uh, stones of Strauss, um, and there's a marker for Mozart. Uh, Mozart died as a as a pauper, and he there is no 
They don't know where he was buried. He was buried in a pauper's uh, gravestone, unmarked. Great. But obviously, the followers and uh, made a marker uh, where uh, where to not now, a marker. Now this cemetery looks quite attractive. It looks like it, it has it, beautiful trees. And this part of it is quite nice. Um, the part where my um, wife's parents were is an older part. We went to an even another older part, all con contiguous, yep. where my wife's mother's side of the family um, was, were buried. But we weren't able to, were not able to find the gravestones on, on that side of the family. Okay. We, we went up and down the aisles, and um, it just so didn't work out. So this was a real uh, genealogy tour. Yeah, it really was. Uh, so uh, this, this is, is a, still Austria. This is Vienna. This is the Holocaust Memorial. Okay. The sides of this memorial looks like a row of books. Uh, that's where the memories are stored. And the names of the concentration camps are written on the platform that goes around it. Uh, so you, as you see, uh, there are a number of uh, things that we wanted to see. Now this is right in Vienna, not far from the university actually. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So. Um, uh, Let's see, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, some more concerts. Uh, there's the uh, Vienna Concert Hall. Beautiful. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased that you, you can see the, the statues and the indoor pictures didn't come out as good. No, this is a beautiful, this is, looks like you paid for the photo. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my camera went to work and uh, we saw a Mozart opera, the Ma Magic Flu, and here we go. This is a, a picture of the singers. Now, let me ask you a quick question, Joel. In that video, I noticed a, some religious artifacts that looked like a photo of Jesus Christ. This was a public opera house or no, concert no. hall? The, the, the slides and the movies went a little fast. The last thing you saw was uh, on another day, we went to a church uh, where they had a performance and there was a violinist. Oh, so and that was that, in that a was, church? That, yeah, that was just a church uh, okay. uh, where you line up and it was free, okay. um, and there was a, an evening concert, and it was, it was very nice. It looked beautiful, uh, the, very ornate. The opera that you, you saw, a little bit of the picture of the opera, of the performers, uh, they wore wigs, and they were in traditional 18th century uh, dress, and we saw the, the ma magic flute. Uh, and so that was on one night, and what you just saw was the performance at a, of the violinist in, in, in another part, another day. Um, and then um, we saw um, a lot of historic buildings and parks in Vienna. Vienna is an old city. Yes. It's not truthfully as exciting as Budapest and Prague. When uh, in Vienna did you get out to that, um, oh, the Habsburg's fabulous uh, we, we palace? Had, right. They, they had Schoenberg. Had, Schoenberg, very good. Yes. Uh, we didn't go there this particular trip. Uh, my wife and I were in Vienna um, 40, 40 year, five years ago. <laughs> Um, on our just honeymoon, yesterday. Just yesterday. On our honeymoon, we had made a, uh, yes, a trip there. Yes, I remember uh, a and, very mm, magnificent palace. But uh, so this was a different, this trip was different focus. Yes. More on music, more on, on family history. So that was a little bit about Vienna. Uh, now we're going to take the train, and now you see here uh, a picture, postcard, of, of Chesley Kromloff. That's it, what I couldn't pronounce when I introduced you. Chesley. Chesky, C E S K. Y. Kromluk. And this is located in the Czech Republic. Yeah. In the Czech Republic, right over the border of um, Austria. And you okay. see there's an island there with a river going around it. Yep. Uh, and so the, you, the island part is really the quaint area. And to the top of the picture, you can see the castle. So we stayed uh, in, the, in, in the town and had it, went to dinner. And then we also had a tour of the castle. And that, that was fun. So here's a picture uh, on top of the castle looking back down into the city. 
And you see from this picture um, the orange roofs, the bridge that crosses the river, and take a look at right by the river, those chairs, little yes, I dining see. room. Yep. Uh, we're going to... A so, restaurant. A restaurant. You often uh, talk about... I always ask you how the food, food. is. <laughs> That's one of the things you always do. So we did it. We did eat well. Um, this is a picture of... The, uh, right on that side, we had our dinner there. And, we, uh, and there's our dinner, our salad. Beautiful. Uh, very nice presentation. Um, and it's good dinner. And here's our chicken and rice. So a lot of rice. Three scoops of rice um, with chicken. So in the, uh, uh, I call that my. Starve. I didn't starve, and I called an artistic picture um, of of where we are and what we had. Now from the restaurant, now we can look across the river, the river, and that's a house, a building, um, and that's a, a very colorful and clean. Yeah, it looks a, very nice. A, a very, now this was all under communism. Did anyone say to you, since communism ended? We began renovating. Did you get any discussion as to how things had changed since they received they, democracy? You know, it's now um, twenty years, twenty-five. Forty. The war was over in forty-five, uh, yep. and then in and Russia was in there uh, in, in communism uh, in the eighties. Yep. Um, there is they, a lot. Of, all the places have been rebuilt, cleaned up. Um, uh, Vienna is still dark. Yeah. Uh, stones. Well, but they weren't under communism. But yeah, the they, rest of yeah, the re this was, and, and look, look, the buildings are very colorful. You get pastel, stuccos, pink and. But did they and, say to you since the 80s this has happened, or did they say even under communism we had a beautiful look? No, no. no. This was re this was all you can tell. It was all renovations. So redone. everything started after they became free of communism. Definitely true. Okay. And now you'll see that also in in um, in Prague. Uh, so we had our little special overnight trip in this uh, castle town of Chesky, Chesky yep. Kromlov. And now we take a van, uh, a, uh, a now bus. Now wait, this clock is where? Now in we're, Chesky? We're, right, this is in, this is in Prague. Oh, we're so, now in Prague. So okay. we're now in Prague. We took um, a first class bus, uh, a van, uh, with a bathroom in the van. And it was a four hour drive from Chesky to Prague. Okay. So, and this clock is a, a really a, 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 a center of the town on the bell tower, very ornate. Yes. Um, the little to the top of it, every hour a cuckoo comes out, and uh, cuckoo, cuckoo, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and in the grounds, in the, in the courtyard or the, the square in the bottom, every people look out, they kind of make, make it a point of being there on the hour and watch the cuckoo come out. Um, this is the next picture you're going to see. Okay, there now we're at the top of the tower. You can walk up. Oh, look, okay. And look down in the square. So there's the, the square, and um, you can see. Now the, there looks like a big statue in the center. I don't remember exactly what it okay. was, but you, what I, the impression I want to give is it's a clean city. Okay. And it has its unique character as well. Um, it just it's very colorful. Uh, and, uh, and it looks like you had terrific weather. We did. We really did. So uh, in Prague, we went to some synagogues in Prague. Prague was a very big Jewish community. And here's also a very uh, big, well-known site. Here's a Jewish uh, clock with Hebrew letters, and the clock goes backwards, just oh. like, uh, <laughs> okay. um, or maybe they call it forwards, <laughs> but it, it, it goes uh, counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Uh, for, mm. for our viewers who aren't mm. familiar, you're in Hebrew books, instead of going as we do in a standard American book, one through a hundred, mm -hmm. which would be mm -hmm. what we go uh, left to right, and they go right to left, it, and and the Hebrew is the opposite, and around backwards. Uh, so we we picked in the sites. Now remember, we're here on a, a journey to see our, our ancestors, but we also found that we had a cousin, and this ah. is my wife's father's. Um, second cousin, a second cousin, a second okay. cousin, you, you, and they left uh, Prague in the war. They went to Amsterdam. Not they. He he did, and he met his wife when he was in Amsterdam, and then he came back 
uh, to Vienna after the war. Um, and he, they came on a, a, a kinder transplant is where he, he left a, a child's train to, to get out of Prague. And all, when he came back to Prague, all his family had perished. Oh. Um, and so he, he's kind of started again. Uh, he was an engineer. This is his wife. And this is his wife. Uh, she's blind, um, and they're 87 and 80, uh, 80, 85 and 87 years old. Okay. Um, and uh, she was a translator. Um, she worked in the embassies and as a translator, and and he was um, uh, an, an engineer. engineer. I don't quite know what kind of engineer. Um, uh, but so we, we get to see them. Now this is, they had two, two children, and these are their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Wow, okay. Uh, their house that they uh, first rented and then bought is a three-story uh, house, uh, maybe like an apartment house, but yep. the, on the ground level is where they live, and one daughter uh, and their family lives on the, uh, the second floor, uh, like a two, uh, duplex, and the other daughter lives on the lower level. Um, so we got to see the the, the whole fa family, the, the whole family, the, the grandchildren, great grandchildren, and that kind of was important. And we had never met them; we didn't know about them until about s six months before we uh, went on this trip. And you, how did you find them? Did you telephone? Did you? My father-in-law left some records okay. that my f wife went through, um, and we, and he passed away ten years ago. And we still have in our basement um, books and chinaware and other things, and so we're now putting together a family tree. Uh, he remembered and documented um, five generations back, and how he remembered names from five generations. But he did. Uh, but he did. And so now I'm, we're trying to put it together into a book. So you, we saw a little bit of family, and we did some sightseeing. Here we go into a, a, a castle in, in Prague, and uh, there's a um, st street vendors and 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 now what did they have? Forgive my ignorance. Did they have a king at one time? Uh, Prague. Um, or was this just a castle of some kind of nobleman? Nobleman, or, you know, I don't have it all right, in my history. All right, that's okay. Maybe you remember? That's okay. Uh, if any of our but, viewers know, please call us uh, here at AFPAC and let us know. But there were castles, and castles were noble people. And, so, and, and it's also related to the church, too. So um, this was a fun time. And, and next we're going to see ah! some... some <laughs> My wife and I uh, behind the armor. Yep. And again, uh, another photo opportunity. Um, so you can see we had a good time. And <laughs> That's a great To photo. show you more of our good time, uh, I put my. Get a picture of the kids in the armor. I'm taking a movie. So, after we took off the armor, uh, we watched a demonstration, uh, and it was fun, you know. And across the street from this courtyard was uh, the main cathedral, uh, which we also went to, uh, and you look at, walk around and look at. So you've seen the highlights of Prague. Uh, we had fun, we had family, we had castles, and, and now from Prague, we're going to go on more on a family tour. The family tour is going to Rudnitz uh, Ben Laden. This is a town north of um, uh, Prague. Prague. Yep. And our guide, uh, the, our guide from Prague, took us on the train. Oh, again. Now this was a, another guide that you had yes. arranged right. and met with in Prague. Right. Okay. Every city we, in, yep. in Vienna, we had a guide for one day. Uh, day yep. And of uh, the days we were there, and now in Prague, we had a guide that took us to some places, and then we had time on our own. Yep. But then we had arranged to go to the town uh, north of Prague, where my wife's father's father, my wife's grandfather, lived and is buried. And so we went to the town, went to the town hall, uh, met with the town clerk, uh, 
uh, who of course spoke Czech, and our guy translated. Okay. And they had um, computers and maps, very modern, very impressive. But what we wanted to do was to find the cemetery of my wife's um, uh, grandfather. grandfather. And so this is the cemetery, and this is a picture of the And the computer the was able to tell you where to go? Uh, they just said where the cemetery is, and we had to walk there. Okay. And the guide said, you know, given the dates, we had the dates, she said, it would probably be the far end of the cemetery. So let, let's uh, kind of start there and look. So your guide was somewhat familiar, it sounds like, with this cemetery. Um, she... I don't know about this cemetery, but she was familiar. Yeah, I think she was. She she had lived not too far uh, in another town, yep. and so uh, she had traveled. So he says, I guide on the left, and my wife, and this uh, stone in the middle, um, and in the bottom is is where it said Viet Viet Schiff. Yep. And and that's my wife's name is Schiff, maiden name is Schiff, and so we had to go through this, uh, the the rows in the cemetery, and find, and we said, ah. There it is, there it is. And so now, uh, and that's in, in Hebrew and in German. Yep. Um, and, and why it's in German, I don't know, but that's um, um, the, way, the way it is. Um, so we saw the markers, and we went to the, the, the gravestones, and um, we took pictures. And, and uh, we had dinner there, uh, no, lunch. We had lunch. And we were all by, well, we went there by train, and now we're going to take a bus from Rudnitz Ben Laden um, to Theresien, ter, to, um, uh, to Theresien, and uh, Theresienstadt, where the. Uh, Which is a concentration, concentration camp. Concentration camp. Okay. So we're going to go there by bus, public bus. This uh, is, oh, a public bus. Yeah, public bus. And this is again with your guide. With our guide. Okay. Uh, so that's, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, you could do it. There were people who traveled um, uh, with the right hand guidebook. No, no, no. You don't have to be a but, hero. But, I would have uh, the guide too. But I took the, the guide, and, um, and, and you know, she helps us. Uh, of course. Talk, uh, talk about to to give us more story about my wife found some papers that we brought on the train and she helped translate and she found in reading what these papers were it was a bill of sale of the house in Rudnitz that my grandfather uh, sold the house um, for forty gold coins. Okay. Um, and that was this document that she that's translated. That's not so bad today. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know what 40 gold coins <laughs> That's were, about $68,000, so. Uh, whatever it was. <laughs> but Today's so old. the guide was also uh, helped us translate these papers, which were in Czech. Okay. Uh, that we had. Um, so now we're going to go to uh, Theresien. Um, this Theresien was a concentration camp uh, that was really a showpiece that the Nazis uh, wanted to let the Red Cross come in. And the people there were treated reasonably well. Reasonably well. They were allowed to do performance of um, plays, play music. So they did not do exterminations at this point? They did at one point, too. Okay. There were um, uh, uh, um, grave sites. Yep. But um, they had bunks and, and, and barracks where okay. people... And they were able to do artwork and, and, and talk to... and kind of make a life. Um, so... Uh, we're we're going to see some pictures. We're going to see some pictures of the bunks. Okay, these so, are the bunks in the concentration camp. In, in the, one of the buildings in Theresien, um, and that's, you know, uh, looks like a room with, in the back was four bunks, and this one was uh, two or three people. Um, and so they've made this into a museum, and uh, you get to see what it looks like. On the next slide will be another bedroom. Um, uh, you can see the drab clothing, but this person had his own bed, not in a bunk. Um, and so you, you kind of say, oh, got a soft mattress. Um, who knows what? This person uh, could have been uh, sent off to be killed the next day. Um, who, who knows? But in any event, uh, the people there um, were able to have some freedom. Uh, there are some of the artists. I, I, I took pictures of the artwork, and I got to do a little more research about who the artists were, because many of them did survive. Um, but the next picture, I, I, you'll see a slide. There is a painting uh, that is in the galleries in one of the um, uh, buildings 
of artwork that was done from um, uh, people in the concentration camp. And it's a nice pastel, uh, predict, uh, portraying the, his the history and the time. Um, I guess this um, looks like women. So this must have been an area of the, where they, the bunks were probably men, and these bunks were probably for women. They were, where they probably segregated, prob uh, I would imagine. Uh, so there were... Uh, uh, and, how, uh, how big was the concentration camp, the, uh, the land mass in uh, general? You know, it was from where to where. Uh, you can walk the, uh, the outskirts. You can walk around from the museum yep. to the, the bunkers. Uh, there was a railroad track Crossing, yep. uh, that went from one area, went out to nowhere. And then it stopped. And I have a p other pictures of uh, the railroad track. And then you go into another dungeon area um, where there were, were caskets. Uh, they actually buried people in, in caskets in some cases. And, uh, so they kill them and they bury them. Uh, um, and it way, you know, it's, my wife didn't really want to go there at first. Okay. Um, but, Understandably. You know, these things aren't for every tourist. But uh, you. It's history, and it means more when you put it together. Now that I have these slides and videos, and I put it together for my, my children, my grandchildren, and it's records, uh, records of history. Um, uh, so uh, to put this into perspective, um, we, there was in one of the museums a map of where the concentration camps are. So the next uh, slide. Um, is going to show a map of concentration camps with the different dots uh, where the concentration camps are. So the big dot in the middle um, is obviously a larger concentration camp. And um, let's see now if we can figure out. Well, that's uh, where you were. That's, well, right near there, I can see it. Uh, to reason. Um, that's, you see to reason on yes, that? Yes, in yellow, yep. In, in yellow. So that's, that's in a check. Uh, in, the, in the Czech Republic. Um, to, the, to the right, which would be to east, would be Poland. Yep. And, um, and, and up north, the red ones. Uh, um, I can't quite see what, where all the cities are. Um, but this was a, 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 a museum that was portraying the story and tried to show the number of um, It looks like they had people. quite a few. I didn't know uh, uh, there were that many concentration there were, camps. There were 20 concentration camps stationed around Eastern Europe. Um, and and that's, that's the history. You read about it in the history books or you visit it. Um, and, and now the, the job is to pass it on to future generations. Um, we were there. And uh, we have pictures. Um, some of the pictures of my grandparents, the grandparents, great grandparents, with top hats, uh, beards. Oh, from the uh, 1800s. 1800s. Uh, we have a pictures from 1816, uh, and we have a couple of them on glass. When you came back from the trip, were you surprised in a way of how much you were able to find historically of your family? I mean, finding that finding graveyard the, the of the graveyard great graveyard was something wasn't yes. planned. Uh, you have various kind of things that happen. Yep. Um, and, and, and the museums were educational. Um, my also, one of my pet interests is architecture. And when we were in Vienna, there was a museum um, of architecture. So I said, let's go. And I took a bunch of pictures, pictures of pictures yep. uh, of the buildings and how our, and how the famous architects um, ha had been um, did their work, and they were assembled in Vienna. Vienna, of course, was a center of of knowledge of culture of culture. Um, so we and so you go to museums, and um, and you see you see the history, you see the culture, you see the music. Um, and uh, you, you have a, you talk to the people. Um, did you find in, in your travels here, did you find that the people seemed friendlier in Prague than they might have in Budapest? Or did you find the Austrians uh, uh, in Vienna were a little less friendly? We, we talked to the guides, which were natives. Yep. Um, and, and they were, uh, they knew about history. The, the people in, in Prague, yep. they were very knowledgeable about the synagogues. There must, like I say, something like 20 synagogues. And you oh, visited really? That in, many? In Prague. Okay. And 
just as I go to uh, churches and you see the beautiful churches and, and you, the, the tourists, Jewish or non-Jewish, go to the, the synagogues in Prague. Um, and they look, go to the old so cemeteries. So there's something to see for everybody. And it's history. They also have a history of communism, a museum oh, called really? History of Communism. Yeah, let me we, hear about this. We didn't go there. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't on my agenda. Okay. But it's just pointing out the fact that I, I really like Prague. I would say of, of all of the cities to go to, uh, the river, um, is there the the, the uh, opera houses, the food? The, the, the food you liked in the Prague. The food was pretty good in, in Prague, yep. in, in, in Czech Republic. Um, uh, and we had goulash, and we had um, paprikash. Paprikash, and, yes. Uh, I um, love all that stuff. <laughs> uh, and we we don't travel um, in five star restaurants. We we go with the, in some of the uh, more casual bars. So yep. Sometimes we ate at a pub. I guess in England you call it a pub. Yep, I know and, what you mean. Um, and and then they have a, a vernacular. Uh, which is like um, a ski lift that takes you. This this is in in Prague. Oh, okay. That takes you up to the, the castle in Prague. Um, the castle we visited in Prague. You get to by going up a vernicular. Um, we went to the so the baths, and this is now Budapest. Oh, now oh, Budapest, Budapest I know has baths. Budapest. Did Prague also have no, baths? No, not, not Prague. But Budapest I know they have the famous baths. So we we did that. We went to a place that had. 20, 17, 20 swimming pools. Yep. Small ones, indoors at this temperature, hot, cold, hot, uh, 17 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees. Uh, salt ones, fresh ones, and you can, and then there was an outdoor. Yeah, they're very famous for their uh, quote unquote healing waters. And I think people come from uh, certainly all around Europe to go to those baths there, in, there are in two uh, main places yes. where they they uh, have them and we love my wife likes to go swimming on her birthday and this was her birthday okay so this is what we did uh, and one of them was an outdoor swimming pool had like three big swimming pools and what they had was a a wave machine that went around in a circle and you go in and you kind of ride the waves as it goes around I've heard that may have been something like that in, in, in some uh, place here, but well, that was some of the fun. Um, so we, that, that was a highlight of the, the Budapest trip when going swimming uh, in September. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I remember being in Budapest and uh, I remember that big statue when you started out with your earlier pictures and you were up on the top of that hill. Yes. I remember that beautiful statue of a woman with wings. Uh, I think I have that picture too, yep. and, and, and included uh, in the show. It was a, uh, a very. I, it's it still remains very strong in my mind because it was such a beautiful statue. Um, now tell me a little bit about the airlines and everything. You did a lot of train travel. We, we, you did buses. We, we, you we did, did public buses. We, we went by you train. You had your iPhone to direct you, <laughs> and um, and and the iPhone and the can use to call home. Um, so we can check in with my family to say here we are, and we'll, what, we use the iPhone for that. And we um, so we had train, plane from from Boston. We start with so, so we had two planes and a train, and and the bus, uh, the, the, the to, to get to uh, Prague from Ch Chesley Kromlov, and of course the public transportation subways. Um, how how did you find the subways in most of these cities? You know, just like you have in I know in New York and you have it in Washington. You get these big maps um, on on the wall uh, of the train station, and you say I want to go to uh, this from this place to that place. Uh, and you punch you, in the buttons. And you punch in the buttons, and there you go. And even though you sometimes could walk from from one area to the next, you say I think I'll get on the subway, get off. And go to the next stop. Did you find them pretty clean, pretty modern? Were you impressed? With very them? impressed. Okay. Very impressed with. Uh, we did a lot of transportation uh, movement in, in in Prague. In Budapest, we did a lot of walking. Um, uh, we although we did take um, we did take the subway too in in, in Budapest as well. I remember um, in Budapest the uh, legislature 
legislative building, which I had mentioned. Yeah, we saw that. Did you go in there? This is really a breathtakingly beautiful building. And, and the interesting thing about that, there's a statue of Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Oh, oh really? Right outside the. the I did not parliament. know that. Okay. And and I t took a picture of it. Um, what what Ronald Reagan did um, for Budapest, I don't know, but I think he. Well, it was part of probably tear down that wall, Mr. Gorbachev, <laughs> and uh, opening up the the uh, Eastern Europe Eastern and Europe, what have you, and uh, certainly Germany, the reunification of Germany. Now, you didn't really go to Germany on this tri no. trip, yet you were nearby. We were nearby. Some people did. Um, you and some of the the uh, train trips, uh, the, the the cruise liners will would take have you ended up in Germany in in, in the, the two, um, and so that's that's this trip. Um, where are we going to go next? Uh, like I tell say, me a little bit. I understand you're planning to do the Amazon River. Uh, our next trip, um, actually, come June, we're going to Peru. Oh, uh, so we we fly to Lima, and then from Lima we we go to Puerto Maldado. Uh, which is in the, near the Amazon on, on the um, eastern part. Uh, we stay in an Echo Lodge there for a couple nights. Uh, then we fly to Cusco, and from Cusco we stay. We, it, it's up at uh, 12,000 feet. I think 11,000, 12,000 feet. Uh, just in fact, today I was at a um, infectious disease doctor. I got a ye yellow I fever don't want shot. To touch you. Yeah. No, I got a yellow <laughs> fever shot. Uh, and and uh, m uh, malaria pills and altitude uh, pills. Oh, and you might need vitamin D up uh, there also. So we're we're all prepared for for that trip, and we go to Machu Picchu. Yeah, that I've never been, and I uh, very much want to go. And since my interest in architecture and antiquity, uh, um, we're looking forward to that trip. Um, and the other part will be um, Lake Titicaca, which is the, a lake and the, high, the highest elevated lake in the world. Oh, really? Um, and that is where? In Peru or uh, Chile? In, in, per, in Peru. In Peru, okay. Uh, next, near, we're, we're going to be near Bolivia. The Amazon is the border of Bolivia. Tell me now, so again, did you plan this coming trip on the internet, or was this something well, Again, you're... through the internet, I found. Uh, Porter, uh, Peru Tours, that's the name of it. Okay. And uh, they were, it's only a, a tour company that handles Peru. Yep. I had looked at a few others that will take you to different uh, countries all over. They do tours all over. And so, what, again, what they're doing is hooking me up with a guide. Yep. Who will, and they made the hotel reservations and the flights from Lima uh, to Cusco and, um, and to Titicaca. And uh, which is in um, in uh, Puno, uh, so the, so the, the the guide, the uh, no the tour arrangement. So I have a tour arranger who put this all together. And, Isn't this fabulous? And then there will be a guide in each city uh, that we we go to, um, and and they'll take us around. See, uh, I want our viewers to realize that you don't have to be a travel genius to set up any of these trips, although Joel's um, a very smart guy. And, you know, it's not any more expensive. If you go three stars instead of five stars, it's no more expensive to go just the two of you. Uh, than with a group. Than with a group. You can go with a group of 12 or, or 24, it's our, our good groups. We like a maximum of seven and, and preferably the two of us. Um, so they are, there might in this group there might be seven, but we have a private just the two of us going to Machu Picchu. We, oh, really? Now with, that will be with a guide. With the guide, so I can the guide will tell us uh, the history and all all the points to see. I think you take a train there. You take a train yes. um, from Cusco. You take a train and uh, stay overnight, uh, and you take a bus from the other town to, to actually to Machu Picchu and come back. And, and, and then you take a, t a train back to Cusco. Well, I know you promised me you're going to take lots of photographs. So I'll take lots of photographs. Update and we'll come me back. on the cuisine mm -hmm. because I want to do that trip. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know. So let me just revert back to uh, the Prague trip. So you left Europe. Did you go back through London? Yes, went back through London. Uh, and how did you find the plane? I hear so many mm -hmm. stories with Heathrow. Delaying passengers and our trips, uh, we had in this particular trip there were um, not too the the one too long of layovers, um, and the flights were whereas it was American Airlines uh, to Heathrow okay. and British Air 
to British Air to Budapest, and then British Air uh, from Prague back to Heathrow. Oh, okay. And, so it was and, not that complicated. And, and then and then from Heathrow back, back to, to Boston. Boston, American Airlines. Did you buy any interesting, um, I'll say, souvenirs? Uh, what did we do on souvenirs? Um, no beer steins or anything. Uh, no beer steins, although we, because we already have those for my, for my in-laws, um, um, and my uncles. What did we come back? We came back with some dolls for my grandchildren, okay. granddaughters, and some marionettes. I don't know why marionettes were so popular. Really? But they. Um, and what are they hand painted and everything? Some of them are hand papered and and. Um, they're dolls. It's, it's it's not like when we were in in Venice where we had um, the beautiful the, glass, the glass, and also Pinocchio and the Pinocchio oh, Marriotts. Yes, when they we have were in, the um, in paper mache. Right, um, but the, they were selling marionettes in 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 um, in Prague, um, um, so uh, we we did that. Oh, so we brought to, brought some of that those things back, some scarves, some silk scarves. Um, but you didn't. You wouldn't say um, if one of our viewers asked you, "Was this what you'd call a uh, a big trip to do purchasing?" And uh, that's not. That, some people could. You, you Peru, I think you're going to find that there's a lot of interesting things to buy. I might buy. I've seen they have a lot of beautiful Indian. The uh, Peruvian Indians make a lot of beautiful clothing and vests that I've seen people with that might. There, there might be, be a, a, a scarf or yes. a vest uh, that. Hand, hand woven yes, materials. Yes, they do beautiful hand woven things. Um, but then again, we travel with one suitcase each. Really? And, and a wheeling, a wheelie suitcase. So you go very light. So we go very light. Um, that's so fabulous. Th that's the trips of uh, Ruth and Joel Wynette Travels. Uh, well, I want to thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Um, and I'm going to hold you to a promise, mm -hmm. viewers. Mm -hmm. Remember, I'm telling Joel he's going to bring us pictures of Peru. He's going to let us know all about that trip and uh, the cuisine. Jack wants to know about mm -hmm. the eating. Okay, we'll tell you about that, too. I, ha I had a guest recently, Chris, who... Uh, went into uh, Tibet and uh, the trip was fabulous. It's a fascinating trip he took, but he talked to me every day about lentils and rice. <laughs> yes. Lentils and rice, lentils and rice. And I said, <laughs> Chris, I says, I don't know if I can do <laughs> 10, 14 days lentils and rice. <laughs> uh, and the same food in China, wherever we went, the same stir fry. Yes, uh, I what, remember. What, whatever hotel, uh, restaurant we went to, it all seemed the same to us. I know. Uh, so that's it. So I thank you for sharing this thank with us. Thank you very much for being with us. And folks, uh, thank you for joining with us.